morning sun shines on the gleaming hide of a muscular ranch horse. The aroma of bacon and coffee drifts from the wood cook stove at a cow camp. Silver spurs jingle as the men and women of the West get set for another day in the saddle. From the heart of Canada's finest ranching country, this is the Spirit of the West with rancher and horse trainer Hugh McLennan and his collection of music, poetry, and conversations with the folks who live and work with horses and cattle in the Spirit of the West. I rode out across the pasture the other morning and it looked just like a leading tree Christmas card. With the fresh white snow, the big blue sky, and the evergreen silhouetted against it, the cows were content waiting for the delivery dates not from Santa, but when their calves start arriving in early March. And that's when ranchers and their wives really put in the hours. Usually, they get some experience and some adventures. And as I was going up, where she hit my butt, I thought, this could hurt. And when I landed, I said, it did, because I put both wrists down, and I fractured it. And Norma has the rest of that story today and more. Baxter Black brings us the old big one that got away blues. As the campfire light dances and the flame still entrances these warriors tradition imbues. By the glow of the embers, the teller remembers the big one that got away. On the Rangeland News, uh, we'll kind of sum up the year. Beef prices, for example, last month they only fell three-tenths of one percent. They're still ten percent higher than a year ago. On the Urban Saddles and Western Wear Horse Training File, a family bought what they thought was the perfect horse. And he was. But when they got him home, well, he really was not what they'd hoped for. A wonderful piece of cowboy poetry from a master who doesn't ride the range anymore, Glenn Reefy. Have you ever rode in at the end of the day, your old pony just too tired to jog? Have you ever drank from a bubbling spring? Shared it all with your old border dog. Gonna roll in a few songs about Christmas and cattle country, but this is a good way to start with Clint Bradley. With the embers of the campfire glowing, we down in the evening light. There's a dream of a cowboy knowing That he'll be home tonight Home is where the heart is In the land of the tumbleweed For the creaking of the saddle Is all a cowboy needs Six gun spurs and saddles and the dream of a time long past But as long as it lives in a side your heart The wild, wild west will last Oh, the wild, wild west will last The freedom to believe again Is a gift that we all own So saddle up for the wild, wild west and let your spirit roam Sweet dreams of the prairie road To return to every night Oh, a simple dream of a hearth and home What more do you want from life? Six guns, furs and saddles And the dream of a time long past but as long as it lives in a side your heart, the wild, wild west will last. Oh, the wild, wild west will last. Oh, oh. Well, is always with you even when you're far away the wild wild west will call you home as long as you keep the faith you don't need a reason the dream is yours to own no matter what the doubters tell you the west will call you home Six guns, spurs, and saddles And the dream of a time long past But as long as it lives in a side your heart The wild, wild west will last Well, now six guns, spurs, and saddles And the dream of a time long past But as long as it lives 
freezing inside your heart The wild, wild west will laugh Oh, the wild, wild west will laugh Yes, the wild, wild west will last Oh, the wild, wild west will laugh Oh, the wild Well, that guy, Clint Bradley, is from England, and he performs cowboy and western music all over Europe and the Scandinavian countries, and folks just love it there. Well, for a lot of years about this time, I'd either be out riding or up skiing while Billy would be hard at work getting us packed for another January Spirit of the West cruise, but not this year. However, what we can do is take you back to one a few years ago out on the deck somewhere in the Caribbean, and Ken and Norma were talking about calving heifers. I remember the time that Norma was helping me uh, tag some calves, uh, newborn calves, and uh, we just got finished tagging this calf, and uh, we let it up, and uh, Norma was carrying the vet box with the tags and stuff, and she looked over her shoulder, and uh, the calf's following her. Newborn calves, you know, trotting along yeah, behind starting her. Starting to, to, to imprint on her. Yeah, and uh, so she goes a little faster and a little faster, and the calf trots a little more, and next thing you know, the cow is starting to trot behind the calf, eh? <laughs> and Norma notices this. <laughs> and all of a sudden, she sees uh, the cow lets out a ball, eh? And she sees a brush pile just off to the side, and she climbs the brush pile thinking she's safe and here's the little calf trying to climb the brush pile. <laughs> mommy, mommy! And the cow's ball and she's saying, can, can! <laughs> Man. It's funny, the calf got halfway up it too. Yeah, the cow was <laughs> when you guys are calving heifers, do you sort of uh, split up the duties and somebody has to do the late checks all yeah. night? How, how do you work that out? I take 12 o'clock, Ken gets the rest. Oh yeah, yeah. 12 midnight. Right? Yes, oh, yeah. 12 midnight. And do you come back to bed with your feet just ice I cold do. like Billy does? And my yeah. other end and just put it right on him. <laughs> <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> She's even got a scar from one of them late nights. My gosh, what, wow, what happened there? Oh, we were out calving in the first half of the year and calamity of errors just seemed to happen and I was going over a fence and the heifer come between my legs and threw me and as I was going up where she hit my butt I thought this could hurt and when I landed I said it did because I put both wrists down and I fractured it three surgeries later but, and trust a rancher when the nurse and the doctor said you're off to Edmonton Ken goes can we go after I pull the calf yeah <laughs> wow, that's you're okay now though. Oh, you bet. Yeah, that's great. Yep. Well, coming up, Brian Salmond has a heartwarming true story about an amazing Christmas gift given to him by his wife Joanne. Can you guess what it is? Well, you'll find out when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West. Coming up is uh, one of several songs about Christmas and cattle country. You know, there are so many of them that I never get to play them all before the season's over. And speaking of Christmas, one of the finest cowboy poets on the planet, Brian Solomon, told me a great story about a special Christmas gift from his wife, Joanne, a few years ago. You've got a team, a chore team, yep. that you do chores with. And yep. uh, how you acquired that team is, here again, a tribute to to the women of the West, I think. How did you get that? Team? Well, that's right. That's uh, a Christmas present from my wife, who kind of listens to my little boyhood dreams and, and tries to make them all come true. And uh, the team was just a, a start of it all, I guess. Uh, she's bought me, oh, some real neat Christmas gifts, like thrash machines. And then the, at Easter oh. time, she got me this little healer uh, border Holy Cross pup. And I always thought being as Baxter Black had one of them, I should have one that looked a lot like his. And she's a spitting image to Baxter's dog, and so now I'm in the same league as he is. I got my, my mongrel. Right. And uh, kind of neat that, that somebody will answer all your dreams throughout the years. The team, though, uh, it was, uh, it's not a, you know, it wasn't a team of horses you went to a sale and bought. No, she acquired them from uh, an old timer that uh, did an extremely well scald on them as far as breaking them. Uh, they handled like a dream. 
they're a little keen, but they're steppy. I wouldn't want them any other way. They they handle well. I drive them, and uh, they're so responsive and easy to handle that we used them uh, actually on a pack trip this fall, and they they did as well in the bush as pack horses as they do in the harness pulling rigging around. So wow. you're they're really neat in uh, every they, aspect. It was Christmas morning, wasn't it, when you found out about them? How how did that go? Like. Uh, I understand that Joanne had, had got this team for you. She found them and knew that this was something that you'd been hoping to acquire for a long, long time. But uh, right up till Christmas Eve, I don't. How did she keep it from you till Christmas morning? Well, I'm not even real sure myself. I guess I'm kind of dumb or something because uh, the the signs were all around me. They even snuck my old harness out of the barn, hauled it away, and cleaned it all up so I wouldn't be embarrassed to put it on them when I did get the team. And you didn't and, notice uh, the harness was missing? No, I I actually didn't. And uh, the boys snuck it out of there and cleaned it all up on Christmas morning she said well I have a gift for you I hope you're not disappointed in it took me by the hand led me out to the barn and I, I couldn't believe my eyes really the boys were all in there and had them all brushed up and standing there and uh, I don't think there could have been a finer Christmas present I guess there's lots more expensive ones but when someone puts that effort into something yeah. for you it, it means so much more and, yeah, and, and they'll be around for a long time it looks like Oh yeah, we take care of them. We, they're they're a little agey, all right. But I think we could safely say they'll be with us for another ten years anyway. So we'll do a lot with them between now and then, hopefully. Yeah, what a neat story. And anybody feel like an old time waltz around the Christmas tree? Here's a nice one from Wes English and his brothers about that old pot-bellied stove. On the door shows the welcome within As it shines in the cold morning glow The tree in the corner is carefully trimmed And it's worn by that pot belly stove There's a fresh fallen snow laying soft on the ground Our stockings are hung in a row And the boys in the bunkhouse are gathered around that great big old pot belly stove. We'll tell stories of Christmas and laugh till we cry and dream of a day long ago, ago, long ago when a baby was born so that we might have life. His love is alive in our souls and it's worn by that pot belly stove. smell of cider and spice in the air Cooked apples and cinnamon loaves We'll sit around the table and join in a prayer Hear the warmth of that pot belly stove There's a fine pair of shiny spurs under the tree A saddle and two braided robes But it's present enough for a cowboy like me by that pot belly stove We'll tell stories of Christmas And laugh till we cry And dream of a day long ago, long ago When a baby was born So that we might have life His love is alive in our soul And it's worn by that pot belly stove Stories of Christmas and laugh till we cry and dream of a day long, a day long ago. Born unto us is the Lord Jesus Christ. His love is alive in our souls and it's worn by that pot belly stone. Uh, 
many great friends we've made on our cruises over the years are Gary and Pat McClements, longtime ranchers from the Viking area, and they've been on a lot of our journeys, and they visited us here at the ranch, even helped us brand some calves one spring. Uh, but the first time we met was at Farm Fair International in Northlands in Edmonton. We were walking from one place to the other, and Gary stepped up and introduced himself and said, he had a story for our listeners that they might like. So I pulled out the recorder, and this is the start of Gary's story. Well, it, it really began when my father-in-law, who was uh, retired at the time and, and showing Belgian horses and, and raising them, parading them, and, and doing a lot of a lot of things with them, which we, we usually helped out. And of course, over time, he, you know, he had to go to the auction market and end up buying all the odd one. And, and this one he, is one he happened to buy that was two years old and had never been broke. So during calving in the spring, we, we started working with it. And it, it went pretty well, actually. And in the spring, it was, uh, you know, early in the spring there. And John came up one day, and we had to show him how he's doing. So we, we took him for a little drive, and we hooked the, the Belgian, which is probably a 1,600-pound horse, to a little cart that we'd been normally using with some Arab ponies. And so it was a little bit of a mismatch. But anyway, uh, it went very well. Uh, we uh, shortened things up and tied it up with a bit of twine, and we, we took a little drive over to the neighbors. And there we stopped and had a visit with the neighbors. And uh, on the way home, or I, 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 there it was there, I gave John the reins, and, and he was driving him on the way home. And the colt really went well. I mean, he jogged along, and he, he, he was working very well. And, and until we got just about home again, and the, there's a, we go down a hill through a, through a draw with uh, water on either side of the road there and then up the hill into our place. Well, as we were, uh, as we were heading down, down the hill, the, the colt broke into a lope. And, of course, John not didn't panic or anything. He just picked up the reins a bit, put his foot on the front of the cart, and he actually said, whoa. And, of course, the colt overreacted, and he planted his front feet and uh, come to a halt. And in doing so, his hind feet came up, the cart run forward, and the feet came down inside the cart between us. And at that time, I mean, <laughs> we didn't know whether to run or... It's like the wreck is building here. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that's exactly what we expected, but uh, it, didn't, it didn't really happen that way. As, uh, as the colt's feet came down inside the cart, the cart just sucked up right underneath him, and he sat down. So the big horse is sitting on the seat between Gary and his father-in-law. And uh, they're going down a hill. And you'll hear how that turned out just a little bit later. Next, it's Baxter Black and the big one that got away blues. A terrific cowboy Christmas song. Then the Rangeland News when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Howdy, friends. This is Baxter Black on Spirit of the West with Hugh McLennan. And I'll be right back after this with a little peek at the big one that got away blues. Your land is a legacy, a challenge from those who tended it before you to build on their foundations. At Corteva AgriScience, we understand what it means to be the stewards of a legacy. We embrace the challenge of building on the foundation of Dow AgroSciences to maintain your trust, to bring new solutions, to help you care for your land. See how we can help build your legacy at rangeandpasture.com. And for our Canadian listeners, just check Corteva.ca, the Canadian website. Their pictures are painted on Ancient of Caves. Orion has held them on high, revered through the ages with instinct so deep it appears in a young child's eyes. Since time beyond time, they have sat round the fire in the evening, reliving the chase, offering prayers to the heavens above for the swiftness, the big heart and grace of creatures who challenge their strength and their will to be worthy and up to the task. But often they fail because nature is fair. But they try. That's all they can ask. And there around the fire, small doubts tweak their mind as they stare at the smoke and the glow to summon the courage, the patience and skill for crosswinds beyond their control. And though novice or blooded, each hopes to himself that luck will ride with him at dawn. Because a second or step, in time or in space, is the difference between get or gone. 
These primitive thoughts have clouded their minds since man started stalking the earth. The lore is passed down and is part of their soul. They have heard these same songs since their birth. It hums through their veins. But everyone dreams. It's what brings them here under the stars. That prime evil force they could never explain as deep as the craters on Mars. As the campfire light dances and the flame still entrances these warriors, tradition imbues. By the glow of the embers, the teller remembers the big one that got away. Blue was the big one that got away. Blue. The big one that got away. Blue. Eyes took my surprise when I was looking at my shoes. This is Baxter Blake on Spirit of the West with Hugh McLennan. Brought to you by Corteva Agri-Science. Ah! Not much can raise your stress level more than a tractor breakdown when you need it most. We've all spent hours on the phone and driving around trying to find the right parts. And that's no fun when you're missing something you need to finish the job. Here's a better way. Just go to bctractorparts.com. That's where you can find about any part for any mega tractor. If you're restoring a vintage tractor or just keeping up the maintenance on the ones you're using, you can have the parts you need in a short time. And you know what? There's some great pictures of tractor restoration projects and much more right there at bctractorparts.com. What? Oh, you don't have internet. Well, try calling Mark at 250-395-0960. The Rangeland News looks at the trend line of cattle prices in 2020, how Manitoba ranchers are not really happy with crown grazing changes, and much more. And just before that, here's a fine song from the legendary Alberta Bronc Rider, singer and songwriter you all know, Ivan Danes, and it's called Why I Wrote the Song. Blue snowflakes are falling, touching gently on the ground. Town looks so pretty Christmas all around I walked on by the storefronts The windows full of wares Cause I never had the money For the clothes you'd love in there That's why I wrote this song for you Cause there's nothing I can do Her by to let you know How much I love you you're a one and only kind Another you I'd never find And right now I'm thanking the good Lord And you, you're mine We never had the highlight that Some folks try and find I remember when you were younger We never were the kind but to see a colt or a newborn calf On its first wobbly knees It made you laugh And it made you cry On a spring cool summer breeze That's why I wrote this song for you Cause there's nothing I can do Or buy to let you know How much I love you You're a one and only kind Another you I'd never and right now I thank the good Lord and you are mine So this Christmas there's no big parts or parties in your name With the money I made a payment on the place you started to claim But you know, I know that you won't mind, you're just that kind You see, I hope this song will let you know how much you mean to me that's why I wrote this song for you Cause there's nothing I can do Or buy to let you know how much I love you You're a one and only kind Another you I'll never find And right now I'm thanking the good Lord and you That's why I wrote this song for you Cause there's nothing I can do or by to let you know 
how much I love you. You're a one and only kind, another you I'll never find. And right now I'm thanking that the good Lord needs you. Rangeland News from the Spirit of the West, a roundup of issues and events from the world of agriculture. At the top of page one, it says, I don't know about your grocery bill, but when Billy comes back to the truck with a big shopping cart full of stuff, it seems that it costs quite a bit more to get a lot less since last March. Well, let's see what the prediction for retail food prices was for 2020 and what actually happened. Here's Gary Crawford. Back in January, Agriculture Department food price economists were forecasting that food prices at the grocery store this year would rise half a percent to maybe one and a half percent over 2019. But in May, the pandemic started to affect food supplies and prices, and the forecast went up to two to three percent. In June, they raised it to two and a half to three and a half, and they have stuck to that forecast until now. We're now predicting prices to increase from 3 to 4 percent. USDA economist Carolyn Chelius told us. We haven't really seen the price decreases that we were hoping to see in the categories that spiked due to the pandemic this spring. So meats, for example, have been really slow to retreat. Beef prices, for example, last month they only fell three-tenths of one percent. They're still ten percent higher than a year ago. Meanwhile, Chelia says prices for some other foods have gone up over the last month, including fresh fruits and vegetables. She says things should settle down in 2021 with grocery store food prices set to rise one up to maybe two percent above this year's prices. Gary Crawford for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. British Columbia cattle producers have for a long time uh, wanted to get access to a federally inspected processing plant within the province and a dedicated beef brand for BC Beef, and now it looks like they finally have it. BC Beef Producers is a recently established corporation that has a three-year lease on the former KML Meat Processing Facility in Westwold, BC, and that's about an hour south of where I'm sitting right now. It plans to build a branded beef program that exclusively handles and markets cattle born, raised, and processed in BC. It'll start by processing cull cows and dairy cows, mostly for hamburger, with hopes of expanding to feed fed cattle processing if it all goes well. And the BC BP will be owned by producers who invest by buying hooks that each represent a commitment to supply one animal to the plant. The hooks are being offered for $175 each. ABC-based federal plant will shorten transportation times for cattle, improving animal welfare, and reducing shipping costs for producers. The participants will have to be a part of the Verified Beef Production Plus program or the Dairy Pro Action program to verify that the animals are indeed born and raised in B.C. Agricultural Crown land leaseholders in 18 Manitoba municipalities that declared a state of agricultural disaster in 2019 are going to be given a one-time rent credit. But some leaseholders say this won't make much difference due to the rising rental costs introduced as one of the many reforms to the Agricultural Crown land lease program in 2019. David Halton is the communications coordinator for Manitoba Beef Producers, and he notes that the provincial government didn't consult the association about the recent break. He says their long-standing position has been the need for a five-year transition to the new rental rate, and some leaseholders have argued that with this year's increase in rental rates from $2.13 per animal unit month, to more than $7 per AUM, and the rate is expected to jump again in 2021, this credit might not be as helpful as the province anticipates. The Montana Stock Growers Association wrapped up its first ever virtual annual convention and trade show on November the 18th. The event provided over 200 attendees the chance to gather for keynote addresses, explore a virtual trade show, vote for MSGA's 2021 Board of Directors, and participate in policy development all from their own homes. One session in which uh, members had a lively debate racked up about 534 comments as they discussed and voted on policy. And the BLM, Bureau of Land Management in the U.S., during fiscal year 2020, which ended on September 30th, 
removed 10,139 wild horses and burros from overpopulated herd management areas throughout the West. At the same time, the agency placed 6,162 animals into private care through adoptions and sales. The agency also secured contracts for seven new off-range pastures to provide humane long-term care for up to 5,000 unadopted and unsold wild horses in a cost-efficient free roaming environment, so they say. Well, the last regular cattle sale at the BC Livestock Co-op Kamloops Yards will be December the 14th, and after the Christmas break, the next one will be January 12th. You can get the whole sale schedule and watch the sale streaming live at bclivestock.bc.ca. Meanwhile, at the Innisfail Auction Market, Wednesday, December 16th, will be the last regular cattle sale before Christmas. You can check their website, InnisfailAuctionMarket.com, for the schedule of sales, market reports, and much more coming up in the new year. Okay, now the final item, and this one is a bit embarrassing for me. One of the reasons we've been able to keep this program going is from the support of our advertisers. And Urban Saddles and Western Wear has supported us for several years now, and boy, does that help. As part of their sponsorship for the horse training file, I'm happy to voice their radio ads, not just for our horse training file, but for all the radio advertising they do. And last week, I got a panic call from Rob, the Stingray creative director who writes these great ads, and here's why. The script said, and you may have heard it, and get this, folks, on orders over $100, there's free shipping. And what I had said was, get this, folks, on orders over $100, there's free shopping. <laughs> and I guess the phone lines at Urban's were pretty well heated up for a while. And I thought we might have to sell a ranch to pay for all that free shopping, but we did get it corrected. It is free shipping. And got Leanne and Scott's blood pressure back to normal. Well, coming up in the Urban Saddles and Western Wear Horse Training File, why a family was really disappointed when uh, what they thought was the perfect horse was not what they expected when they got him home. When the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West. So, what about that horse that seemed so good at the owner's place? Why did he seem so different when he got to his new home? Find out on the Urban Saddles and Western Wear Horse Training File coming right up. Riding horses on the beaches of the Caribbean and on the coast of Prince Edward Island. Paragliding above the ocean. Touring farms, ranches, plantations from Hawaii to Australia. Sharing our love of the Western way of life with live Western music on the deck under the stars. And so many more precious memories. So many of those great times that Billy and I have been looking back on. And as you know, we've decided to take a step back from hosting cruises after all these years. And wouldn't you know it, the world changed. Before we were able to do our farewell voyage. Now it's still scheduled for June of 2021 and we're still making plans and preparations to have the whole group start things off here on June 17th with a visit to our place and a concert with the Western Spirit Band. The plan is still to have coaches take you all from our place up to beautiful Sun Peaks for a wonderful experience and then we all head down to Vancouver a night in the spectacular Fairmont Waterfront Hotel, something really special planned for the next morning. Then we board the Holland America Conning's Dam for a seven-day cruise up the Inside Passage. There'll be lots of extra events for our group, including, of course, that famous White Pass Rail Tour. Sounds wonderful to us, but of course, we really can't control the future as much as we try. Jim and Karen and Megan are happy to discuss any questions you might have about joining us. You can call them at 1-800-530- 0131 and stay tuned for more updates. Now it's time for the horse training file brought to you by Irvine Tack and Western Wear, Canada's largest Western store.
At Urban Tack and Western Wear, they'd love to deliver everything to their customers on horseback. Because after all, riding is their passion. Of course, that's not really possible. But I'll tell you what, you can order anything online and they'll deliver to your door in no time. <laughs> By truck, that is. So wrangle up your Western Wear and more at urbans.ca and get this, free shipping on orders over $100. Some restrictions apply or stop in today the good old-fashioned way. Exit 305 off Highway 2 by Crossfield, Canada's largest Western store. Yeah, that's the one we had to fix. Free shipping <laughs> on orders over 100 bucks. Anyway, I got a call last week from a couple who had bought a horse they thought was going to be perfect, but they were really disappointed. They watched the video, they went to check him out. When they arrived, the horse was out in the pasture with four other geldings. The owner walked right up to him, haltered him, and led him to the hitching rail. They watched the owner ride him, and the horse was a push-button, as good as they'd seen. Mom, Dad, and their 14-year-old daughter all tried him out, and they all loved him. The horse was nine years old and lived on the place his whole life. They made a deal and they couldn't wait to get him home, but when they got him home, they unloaded him and put him in a box stall with a little pen adjoining it, and the horse paced around the pen all night long. He had actually worn a trail around it by morning. He didn't want to eat very much, and this pacing went on for days, and when they rode him, he was okay, but he just seemed really uptight and nervous. What happened? Well, you know, this is a common problem. It can take a lot longer than some folks think for a horse that's only lived in one place to adjust to a new and totally different environment or he doesn't know anyone. Now, this family didn't have any other horses and that made it even harder for the newcomer. So much of his security and comfort came from his old home and his old herd. He was used to running out in a big area with the horses he grew up with. And, you know, I've seen it take months sometimes for a new horse to settle in at our place, even though there are always other horses around. We had one. She was a great mare. Bought her from our neighbors when she was 12. I actually rode her here from their place. And when we got her home, she was so insecure that she paced the big pen we put her in for about a week. And she even made herself lame. She was pacing so hard. But she gradually made friends with Lucky and another older gelding, and once we felt it was safe to turn them out together, she eventually accepted her new surroundings as her home, and she actually turned out to be one of the best horses we ever had. So the point is, even the very best, well-broke, solid horse can take a long time to adjust to a new home. And for Urban Saddles and Western Wear, that's the horse training file. Something else that keeps our horses looking really good and uh, good old Lucky, 36 years old, Billy actually took her out for a little ride the other day. She's doing so well and she gets that daily feeding of Hoffman's Horse Ration. You can find out what's in it at hoffmanshorseproducts.com. the story about that big Belgian colt that sat down on the wagon seat with two fellows who were driving him is coming right up. And you know, every time I ride back towards the house on a late winter afternoon, I see the smoke from the chimney, a light in the kitchen, maybe a few Christmas lights on the outside of the house, and I think of a lot of songs about riding home for Christmas. Like this one from Sid Masters and the Swing Riders. I'm riding home for Christmas, the trail is white with snow. Gazing at the northern star that leads the way back home. The doggies are moving real slow.
trail is white with snow Gazing at the northern star That leads the way back home The dogies are a-moving real slow Can't wait to get there And rest near the fire's glow Can't wait to get there And rest near the fire The way the Canada Revenue Agency deals with ranchers and farmers has changed a lot in the last few years, and the financial decisions we make today can have a long-lasting impact on our bottom line far into the future. It really helps to have a trusted professional who really understands your situation to guide you with all your accounting requirements and your tax preparation. Having an accountant who knows the difference between a Herford and a Heifer, what a slick and backgrounding are, and that Alfalfa and Timothy are not just names from a storybook, really helps. Kathy McMillan of PMT Chartered Professional Accountants understands the intricacies of specialized programs like Agri-Stability and Agri-Invest. She understands the demands on your time and can help you spend more time doing your job and less time dealing with endless piles of paperwork. See pmtaccountants.com or call toll-free 877-383-8081. A little while ago, we left Gary McClements and his father-in-law driving a good-sized Belgian colt pulling a cart. And things were going fine until a colt started galloping down a hill and Gary said, whoa, and the colt kind of overreacted and stopped while the cart ran up into his back legs, and here's the rest of that story. Doing so, his hind feet came up, the cart ran forward, and the feet came down inside the cart between us. And at that time, I mean, <laughs> we didn't know whether to run or... It's like the wreck is building here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, that's exactly what we expected, but uh, it, didn't, it didn't really happen that way. As the, as the colt's feet came down inside the cart, the cart just sucked up right underneath him, and he sat down. And he sat there between us on the seat, John on the right, the colt in the center, and me on the left. May as well give him the reins now. <laughs> <laughs> well, John was shortening them up pretty fast there, but uh, uh, the, the funny part was the, the colt never did anything. He just sat there, and he kept going with his front feet. And I always assumed if a horse's front feet were going forward, his back feet would be moving too, but they weren't. He sat there with his feet crossed and uh, just calmly jogged on down the road. So as, uh, as the road leveled out at the bottom of the hill, I stepped out of the cart to, uh, to stop him, I mean, to catch him. We had to somehow get this uh, back in, in a normal order. And we, as I went up beside him on the left, he made a U-turn and headed back. And uh, I, as, he, as we tried it the second time, he, he moved off into the ditch, and that's where we were able to run him into the bank, up against a, a, a power pole, actually, and snub him up. And there we just dropped the shafts, and he walked out, and we uh, started over again, hooked him up, and, and kept on going. But the unique part is that nobody, and we just couldn't believe that once he sat down be beside us with his feet crossed, that he would just keep going on two legs. <laughs> That's a whole new definition of the term driving horse. <laughs> yeah. He's in the cart driving himself with you. That's right. And it, it, it wasn't a, anything really spectacular, but it was pretty unique, I think, uh, in that, you know, you, you don't, you don't, I wish I had it on, on a tape. Wouldn't that make a uh, great video? Yeah, so that's, we could see it, you know. And we, we told the story quite a few times, and, and uh, one of our neighbors who writes cowboy poetry there quite a bit, he, he had a lot of fun with it and, and, and did a pretty good job of making up a, a poem about it. Man. <laughs> he turned out to be a pretty decent horse, I'll bet. Yeah, he was, a, he was a good horse, but he was hard to match. That's really why we only had the one. He, he had a very odd coloring, but a, a real good confirmation, real good pony. Yeah. Well, that's a great story. Thanks for, <laughs> for stopping me and sharing that with us. That's super. <laughs> well, I thought about you a lot because we listened to your program and, and really enjoy it. And as I said, since that uh, little episode, Gary and Pat and Billy and I have become really good friends. Another beautiful cowboy-flavored Christmas song and the Cowboy Poetry Spotlight on the way when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West. 
Barry Ward is a lifelong rancher and a fine songwriter and singer, and he was really well received at the Kamloops Cowboy Festival a few years ago, and he wrote this song that, uh, well, it could be said in Minnesota or uh, up in Fort St. John, B.C. It's called Christmas in the Pine River Valley. And I long for the touch of her soft hands on my face. Her memories drawing me back to this place Her arms are beckoning, come unto me It's Christmas in the Pine River Valley It's Christmas in the Pine River Valley Left my heart over that mountain where we rode by the river in the morning sun, side by side, swaying and laughing. We worked till the day. Busting drifts to make it home by dusk. A flickering lantern lights up Christ's nativity. A warm rhubarb pie baked just for us. Cause it's Christmas in the Pine River. Big old pine trees assure me that I'm finally home. The quaking aspen singing carols for me, cause it's Christmas in the Pine River Valley, and I long. For the touch of her soft hands on my face Her memories drawing me back to this place Her arms are beckoning, come unto me It's Christmas in the Pine River Valley Christmas in the Pine River Valley I left my heart over that mountain Where we rode by the river in the morning sun I gotta send that one to Tom Cole. I can almost hear him singing it. One of the great cowboy poets we lost a while back was Glenn Rafuse. He lived the life that he wrote about and he could really put it into word pictures. Now a few years before he passed away, we were sitting around talking about why he wrote this poem and then he recited it uh, from memory as I recorded it. Well, we've had a lot of discussion in the last year in our Cowboy Poetry Association and among our performers about keeping it cowboy, uh, kind of using cowboy lifestyle material 
maybe dress them that way on the stage, kind of walk the walk and talk the talk kind of thing. And so this poem will uh, tell you where this old cowboy stands on that subject. I just call this, Have You Been There? Have you ever eared down a wild bronc? Have you castrated lambs with your teeth? Have you ever been caught in a blizzard gathering cows in off of the lease? Have you ever rode in at the end of the day, your old pony just too tired to jog? Have you ever drank from a bubbling spring, shared it all with your old border dog? Have you ever been startled at midnight when a pack rat invaded your bed when you was 40 miles from the home ranch, camped out in some old wagon shed? Were you ever out leading a pack train, loaded down with groceries and mail, just a strolling along through the timber when a grizzly stepped out on the trail? Have you ever tied on to a snotty old cow, then your cinches they started to slip, but your dallies was jammed in the biscuit, and you just couldn't loosen your grip? Have you ever been trapped in a loading chute with a ton or more of raging bull? Not a hell of a much to hide behind, and just praying your bladder ain't full. Have you ever dragged calves to a Brandon fire, smelled the smoke and the dust and the crud? Have you stopped to chat with a peaceful old cow, just laying there, chewing her cud? Have you ever wrestled with barbed wire till your clothing was nothing but rags? Have you ever doctored a wire-cut horse, so damn putrid you wanted to gag? Have you ever watched that temperature drop as you shook out that last bale of straw? Have you ever cursed that old north wind that burned the hide right off of your jaw? Have you ever marveled at sunsets, the purple of crocus in spring, the bugling of elk in the autumn where mountains slope down in a ring? Have you ever dozed on a sunny hill when summers were pleasant and green? Have you ever danced with a country girl as radiant as a queen. Well, if some of these things have been part of your life, then I'm sure as hell glad we could meet, because this is the stuff that separates cowboys from the rest of the folks on the street. Well, thanks again for riding along, and next week I hope you can join us for our annual Christmas edition. And thanks again to our great support crew, Mark and Kathy McMillan, and you know, if you enjoy this program, I know you will love Canadian Cowboy Country Magazine. You can subscribe online at cowboycountrymagazine.com. Hope you can check out our YouTube version. Mark adds all kinds of spectacular video to each episode. And you can go back over the years and see our past programs there. And you can also get the show as a podcast. The links to all of that are on our website, hugh mclennancom Till next week, I'm Hugh McLennan. Hope to see you down the trail somewhere real soon.